Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have Herb Cogliano here, and he is an author, and he is the CEO and founder of Aspiring Growth Advisors. Yeah. And he is here today to uh, tell you a little about scaling. And there are many companies out there who struggle with scaling, uh, don't maybe understand some of the concepts. And there are also companies out there that make over a million dollars that want to make $5 million or $15 million or $50 million. And they're not sure how to get to that next level. Well, he's here and he's here to help everybody from coaches to big corporations who are growing and want to continue to grow. So Herb, it is a honor to have you on the show today. I am just excited to hear what you have to say. So many people out there struggle with, with the concept of scaling and, yeah. you know, they want to really elevate to the next level wherever they're at in their, in their uh, business. And they just don't know how to do it. And, you know, I'd love to learn more about, you know, scaling, understand the concept of it and understand how companies from coaching to companies that are making $50 million can actually keep elevating themselves the right way to get to the next level and to keep growing. Well, first of all, it is great to be here on the show. And I look forward to hoping, giving some perspective, some give back to the audience that you have. Uh, you've, you've had such a tremendous following. But my journey started very young. I was born in an entrepreneurial family family business, second generation, and would sit around the table every night and listen to my father talk about trials, tribulations of this family business and what he was going to do about trying to grow it and help people during it. Um, my father was in the employment business. My father had a disability. He was deaf in one ear, yet chose to be in a business that required using the phone. And as he was growing up and trying to find employment, people would give him a challenge because of that disability to find work. Mm -hmm. And it became his purpose to help people find meaningful employment, regardless of their skill, age, background, or capability. Right. And that fueled this family business. And my life in the business fueled in me this entrepreneurial spirit to try and help others and that came in the form of trying to grow our company. And Stacy, we got stuck. We had a certain amount of employees. We've been doing business for decades. The competition started to come in. We became more commoditized. It was hard to keep good people. It was hard to find good people. And we were just kind of in this flat mode. Yes. And if your company is big enough, it becomes a lifestyle company that suits you, but maybe not all your employees. Right. And what I learned was if I wanted to keep the many A players that I had, I needed to create a company with them of bigger futures. Right. Because A players want a bigger future, not only for the owner, but for all of them. Right. And so that got me on this journey of finding a method that could help me do that because I'd never had a quote course in school on scaling up. Right. And I wasn't a startup anymore. So I wasn't going to an incubator for the help. Yeah. And I came across this book written by Vern Harnish called Scaling Up. And he has a great book today, he's revised it to uh, a book called Start to Scale. And we got reading that book. And what we learned was, we learned that there were three barriers that keep us from growing. Number one, in the beginning, we know what we're good at. We hire employees that in areas that we're not good at, and we delegate. Right. As the company grows, we need to develop leaders as we grow. Mm -hmm. But the people we hired were doers. Right. And then we want to make them leaders and not everybody wants to do that. Yeah. So we get frustrated. We lose some people. 
So the ability to go from being the company brand, the top salesperson of the company, to the top developer of your staff into leadership talent is a pivot. Yes. And not all owners understand how to do it or have the right mindset for it. Right. Second thing was scalable execution. What I mean by that is if you have more people, more clients, more products, more locations, the ability to build an org chart where everybody understands the right communication channel, mm -hmm. the right decision-making within that org chart yeah. becomes complex and it becomes very um, dysfunctional if not done right. Right. So we have to help you with scalable infrastructure, leadership development, and the final barrier is market dynamics. Right. Let's say you have a great product. It's selling... And then a year, two years later, your sales start to drop off. Mm -hmm. And yet you don't want to change because the product's been so good. You're afraid if you change it, you'll have nothing. Right. So you do nothing. And then you get commoditized or replaced or um, a new entry comes, somebody new comes in. Yeah. So the ability to see the trend and evolve your product service offering to be market ready and mm -hmm. valuable is where most owners stall. Right. And we have tools and methods to help you see that, navigate and make the right pivot when you need to. Right. And so these were things that I didn't know what I didn't know. So we implemented it. I got my own coach as a CEO and I don't know about you, but a lot of CEOs are like, I don't need a coach. I'm the CEO. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. And yet what I found was to have the humility to say that I'm open-minded and I still need to learn. Mm -hmm. I can benefit from somebody who's been there and done where I want to go already was a really great thing in my development and a lot of employees don't want to tell the CEO constructive feedback because yeah. that's not always comfortable. Right. And my coach was able to give it to me very straight and professionally and opened my eyes to things I would have never saw sooner. And that really helped too. So the platform in scaling up along with the right coaching helped me overcome those barriers we just talked about. I think that's so important because I think a lot of times I would hear from CEOs that, you know, they don't understand my business. My business is different. They're not going to understand where, you know, where I'm coming from because they, they don't deal with that type of thing. I would hear that from a lot of doctors in, in practices. They would mm -hmm. say they don't understand the medical field or I would hear from a, from a CEO. They don't understand the electrical industry. It's not, they're not going to get it. We, we do things differently, you know, and, and that's a common thing that I hear. But then I see a lot of businesses doing the same thing that they did three, four years ago, even yep. 10 years ago. And they're still running their business in the same fashion where yep. times are, you know, really changing. And when we did a survey, you know, delegation really hit um, of, as a very popular topic and it, being able to delegate because I, that was a, an obstacle that a lot of business said they, they had when it came to um, running a profitable business to, you know, really understanding how to delegate and how to scale. Those were two um, issues from all ends uh, of the um, of the of the uh, market, whether it was a, a starting business to a multi-million dollar business or a seven million dollar business or a fifty million dollar business, those were two things that a lot of them had issues with. I I would compl completely agree. Uh, if you think of delegation. What is it? Number one, if I'm delegating to you, Stacy, do you understand the priority around what we're delegating? Right. So if you understand that, like what is the objective? And then number two, do I give you data? What are the important KPI metrics 
that if you're looking at the data daily and mm -hmm. reviewing it weekly, you'll know when you're on target or off target. Right. And then what is the meeting rhythm where you and me can have feedback and you can have peer accountability to the accomplishment of what I delegated. And if you simply define what is the priority, what's the data in looking at it, and the accountability review in following up on it, you will have a good delegation. Yeah. And most people mess up in one of the three areas to make it successful. So they get frustrated and you and I know what they say, I'll just do it myself. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that stalls their growth because now you can't do all those things. And then the people you delegated feel what? They don't feel good. They feel like you don't trust them. Right. Um, slippery slope. Yes. Yes, definitely. Definitely. And, and, you know, people have to realize too, a lot of the CEOs and a lot of the founders, um, you can't do everything. It's just, you know, that's, that's how you start to decline is, is because there's, there's not, not enough hours in the, in the day. You know, when you subtract your hours of sleep and you subtract, you know, all these different things, you know, how many hours do you have to really focus on your business? You know, and, and many people, you know, there was, uh, you know, there was one gentleman, he, he, uh, he's, he minus the amount of hours of sleep that you have a day, he minus the amount of hours of sleep you have in a week, you know, he went over, you know, the, the concept of you take an hour for breakfast, or you do this, or you do that. And then how many hours do you actually have to work on the business? And, mm -hmm. it, you know, when you when you minus all these little things that we do in life, and you really think about the business hours, you don't really have a lot of hours in the day to get everything you want accomplished, especially if you're a business owner. Owner. And sure. um, within those hours, you know, you, you do need to understand your um, you, you how to delegate. You do need to understand your KPIs. You have to understand the metrics and, and what's going on on a week to week basis and and understand where the money is coming from or where, you know, what product or service might be declining. And if it is, why is it declining? And a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people tend to it seems like they um they they don't know how to do it, you know, from from what I've I've, you know, from so many people that I've talked to, uh, they don't know the correct way. So in the beginning, Stacy, I remember having a conversation with my father where I was fairly young in the business, but I said, you know, Dad, you know what I really enjoy? I enjoy working on the business, not in it. Yes. And he looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> but what I learned was I had to earn the right to work on the business by building a business with other great managers that could work in it yes. with great teams under them. Yes. And so the growth paradox is everybody thinks I'm going to start a business of my dreams, work really hard. And the harder I work, the bigger it, it gets, the better it will be for me, my life, my work, my drama, my stress. Yes. It doesn't happen that way unless it's planned. So mm -hmm. you get busier, more clients come in, more drama with people and strategy occurs. Yes. So the key is to put in the systems of building people and execution platforms so that as you're doing it over time, mm -hmm. you'll get to spend up to 80% of your week working on the company versus in the company. Right. It took me about three years. I'm, I'm going to say I averaged two to four hours a week in the beginning working on it mm -hmm. and the rest of the week putting out fires. <laughs> I believe right? we've all yeah. been there. Mm -hmm. But once I got the right team, once I clarified the values and hired towards it yes. and recognized and rewarded it, mm -hmm. once I had a purpose that was inspiring and energizing for not just me, but a collective group of great people, the business got energy in and of itself. And once we picked the right strategy of what markets our clients valued and were willing to pay a valuable um, 
offering for, mm -hmm. then the business would scale. But it just took me a while with the playbook to know what order I need to do that. So the work that I do is based upon 20 years of working with the playbook and not any two implementations with a company are the same. Right. You have to understand that like a doctor, you diagnose the business so you can prescribe the right medication so that your business, um, how do I say this? You work hard to create your business and you don't want anybody coming in messing it up. Right. So we're very thoughtful about where do we need to begin that would be productive and not disruptive? Right. And that's the that's the nuance of being a coach working with a particular platform. And I know you have tools and methods, and I'm sure you're very thoughtful about which ones do I give now and why. And Herb's issue is different than Joanne's issue. And it's important that you do that good work. Right. Or you could hurt a patient. Right. So when a person uh, wants to create their productive playbook, because one of the things when you were mentioning that, the first thing actually before we go into the playbook, um, many people I hear complain that it is very hard to find those good employees or those yep. leaders. Is there a way, because um, there are people who say that there are certain methods you could use and, you know, advertise, you know, like when you're interviewing them, talk about the core values, see if they meet their core values, meet up with the business core values. Is there something that you have learned over your, your course of experience that helps to put a strong team together? Yeah, um, I think it's a combination of things and it's a journey, but ultimately we use top grading and top grading is a book, uh, a book by Brad Smart mm -hmm. and it was used by Jack Walsh at GE in a lot of their success over the years in hiring and developing people. Yeah. But the short story is that we uncover the values, we uncover the purpose, we put in our job ads those words because they're magnetic to the candidate that would have them. Mm -hmm. And then we interview with those particular values and other things, technical skills, experience, and we make sure we have all of them. And then we onboard people with the proper education so that when they come into the company, they know why we act and do the things that we do. And because they're aligned to it, they enjoy doing those things so much more together. Right. And then our performance reviews have elements of the value and purpose uh, review in the overall performance review. So we keep recognizing those people that are living it even more. And you'll find that over the course of a year or two, you're going to be recognized as the best places to work. Mm -hmm. Your turnover is going to go down. Your employee referrals are going to go up. Right. Your client referrals will go up because they so enjoy working with your great team. Yes. Um, a simple story. When I first did my A player rating in the company, I have a very simple question. Stacy, look at your org chart. Mm -hmm. And I want you to look at each person and ask yourself, knowing what you know today, would you enthusiastically rehire that person? Right. If you would, make them an A. If you'd hire, but not enthusiastically, mm -hmm. make them a B. And if it's neither A or B, they're a C. Right. So if you have 10 employees and only five of them are enthusiastic rehires, you have a 50% A player rate. Right. And your goal is to get to 80% or more. And I'm going to tell you why it's so important for an owner in scaling. When I first did this, it was in a small division of 25 people. Right. My A player rating was 38%. Wow. Now, Here's the, here's the important part. What if I scaled from 25 to 150 people, mm -hmm. but with a 38% A player rate? 
what would I be scaling? Drama. Yes. The less A player rating your company has, I found the more drama you're dealing with. Maybe. So what I tell my clients is that we need to get that right now. Mm -hmm. And then we scale an 80% A player rate and beyond and your journey becomes that much quicker, better and more fulfilling for everybody. Yes. But for 20 years, I was scaling drama. Right. And I didn't know why. And now we have the tools to, to help bring that down. I love that. I love that. That's a great way to really weed out the people in your, in your company that really don't, aren't assets. You know, they're more pulling down the company than they are helping to build the company up. Yeah. Now, in fairness to people, the perspective that I shared with our leadership team was, we want to screen in versus screen out. Right. And, and I'll tell you why. Because I don't judge values. Your values can be different than mine. Right. But they're equally wonderful. Mm -hmm. So if I screen in somebody that you and me are not value aligned mm -hmm. and they don't feel like they're an A player because it's just not them. Right. I'm, as a human being, I'm doing them a disservice and they deserve to find the culture where they can be the A player in. Right. And that's the way I look at it. Help everyone get to that A player spot, yeah. wherever that is for them. Oh, I love that. I love that. And that's a great way to actually look at it because sometimes people let their emotional um, feelings, you know, um, I feel bad for the person, you know, I, I you know, they, they do work hard, but they aren't an A player. They're, they're not a B player. They're more of a C player, but they have a good heart. They're a good person, but yep. they just don't meet the, the core values and standards of the company that you have, you know, so in all fairness, like you said, they need to find their own culture that is right for them. And when you yeah. look at it that way, you're looking at it more at, in a constructive business-like manner than you are, you know, where you're letting your emotions or you're looking at it from a, a you know, non-business non perspective, because there are a lot of people who run businesses, but they, they, they're they more non-business-like. They haven't really grasped the concepts of, of running an actual business the way, you know, constructive way where it's going to be able to scale up, you know, and keep yeah. growing. And, and when, when you talk about the playbook now, can you talk, explain more about what the playbook is and how you can create your playbook for your company to help your company grow? Yeah. So um, the scaling up performance platform is the playbook that is discussed in the book, Start to Scale, or the other book, Simply Scaling Up. So for anybody looking to get a introduction into what is the Scaling Up Performance Platform, this is a great thin book, but great book to kind of get you started. For those people that are like, no, I, I, I read that book, but I want even more, you can get the book Scaling Up itself. But the playbook deals with four major decisions that we need to use tools for to get our company growing. Number one is people. Mm -hmm. That A player rating, if you got people drama, by the way, employee people, client people, supplier people, or even partner people. If you have drama in any of those, our people tools help you deal with that and eliminate it by making a system that get you better at making better people decisions. Right. S strategy tools, your sales are off, your margins are down, your industry industry's growing 10% a year, you're only growing five. Right. Somebody's eating your market share. Mm. And we have strategy tools that help you make better decisions with strategy. So your position to grow your revenue and margin Execution, do you know anybody who works more than five days a week, mm -hmm. more than 10 hours a day? 
but has very little profit at the end of the year to show for it. Right. Yes. That's an execution decision. And we have tools that help you identify how to build better execution with your team to build a better bottom line. And the final one is cash. If you don't have enough cash, number one, you can't stay open, but more importantly, you can't grow. Yes. And I'll give you an example. You met a wonderful executive and you're like, oh, I would love to work with Jane. If Jane was ever available, I'd hire her in a minute. Yes. Jane calls you next week and says, Stacy, I'm finally available. <laughs> and you look at your bank balance and say, I can't afford her. So opportunity cash for a scaling company is so important. Yes. And so we want to help you build not only profit, but cash. Those two together ultimately translate into valuation. So a business owner takes 100% of the risk. We want to build the valuation of your company so that if you ever sell it, and you don't need to, but if you ever did, you're building value in all the years of hard work you've put in. Right. So those are the four areas that we work on. And then we create a simple one page plan, which is really your vision of how you're going to grow the company over the next decade on one page. And it's so simple that you can share it with every member on your team and they get it. So right. you have alignment, you have focus, and you have clarity on where the heck is the company going? Right. Most A players want to know where is this company going if I'm going to stay here? Right. And now we have that. I like that. I like that. Now, is it, is it when when you have everyone on board and everyone is growing is, you know, when it comes to scaling, um, I, a lot of people um, are afraid to uh, to scale, you know, and, and they're afraid to, um, you know, when once they get to a certain point um, because their business is growing, they may, they may be a little bit up plateaued, but it's stable. Yeah. And they're afraid if they scale a little bit more and they see that they, they have the opportunity to grow, they're fearful because they are having steady income coming in and they're afraid to take that chance because if they do take that chance, will the same audience, you know, be willing to purchase, you know, their services or products at a higher cost? Will they lose what they have? You know, yeah. what's your opinion on that? Um, if you look at the numbers, about 32 million companies in the US, out of that many companies, only 4% ever scale over 1 million a year in revenue. Okay. 96% are less than a million. Wow. You know what's even scarier? One half of 1% ever make it to 10 million or more. Wow. So, it is not easy to do it mm -hmm. and there's risk. Yes. But I'm going to tell you the simple question you have to ask yourself. Why do you want to do it? Mm -hmm. Because if your why is not strong enough, right. I wouldn't take the risk. Mm -hmm. And I had a business owner recently that said they were 5 million and in three years they wanted to be 15 million. Yes. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, exciting. Mm -hmm. Why? Could not tell me why. And I said, okay, do me a favor. Mm -hmm. You need to go sleep on why you want to do 15 million. Right. And then if that's compelling enough to you, give me a call back. Right. But if not, I just wish you well, but you need to really think about that. Yes. He thought about it. Call me back. And next thing you know, he had a child that had uh, a development issue mm -hmm. and required special education. Mm -hmm. He was concerned about the funding of that child if they weren't able to take care of themselves in adulthood. Yes. And he was older 
And mm -hmm. if he passed, what would happen to the care and concern? Mm -hmm. And I could tell when he spoke, he was so emotionally connected to making sure that never happened. Right. That why is what he's going to have to hold on to when the market shifts. Yeah. Or a key employee leaves because you have to want to fight through it in order to get to the other side. Anything worthwhile is a struggle, but we're gonna show you how to make it easier. And if you're more focused, more enjoyable. Right. So final comment, I had a dear friend who was struggling with their company, was literally putting it up for sale. He was fed up. Yes. I said, do me a favor. Let's work on a couple of areas together Mm -hmm. Six months, tell me how you feel. Right. After six months, maybe nine months, he fell back in love with his company again <laughs> because he knew how to hire better people. He knew how to give them better clarity on their priorities and feedback and support. He knew what the strategy was that clients were willing to buy. Right. Right. And now he built a business of his dreams, will not sell the company, and just is re-engaged to want to build it to a new level, right. which to me is so much fun. That's what it's about. Yeah. And I, I have one more question. I, when it comes to scaling your company, sometimes I feel that greed sometimes, you know, you start off with a purpose. You start off, you know, with a you know, you're, you're really excited. You get up in the morning, you have that purpose. You really, you're, you have that drive, that ignition underneath you that makes you ignited and makes you want to really get up and go and be your best. And, and then sometimes you get to that level of success and you forget that purpose. And then all sure. of a sudden green <clears throat> starts to take over. And then I've seen many companies plateau downhill very quickly. Yes. Greed overrides purpose. You know, what's your intake on that? So have you ever heard of a BHAG from yeah. Jim Collins, Big Hairy Audacious Goal? No, I haven't. So imagine that you have five, uh, how many listeners approximately do you have? I know it's a lot. It's about 1.3 million. Okay. So let's say it's 1 million for easy numbers. Mm -hmm. And do you believe you're making a difference right now to a million people? I think we're making whoever clicks onto this, who's ever interested in it. I definitely think so. So it would be the, on the, it would depend on the interest of the listener. If this resi this topic resonates with them. So it probably would be under a million because it depends who's listening. And if this topic resonates with them. All right. So let's say it's half mm -hmm. 500,000. Okay. So your work is purposeful mm -hmm. and you're getting transformation in people. Mm -hmm. But if I showed you a way to scale your business that you could 10x that in the next three to five years. Right. And now we don't have 500,000 people impacted. We have 5 yeah. million. Mm -hmm. So that is scaling purpose. But if you have a business model with a business economics that you could do it profitably, I'm scaling your purpose with profit. Right. Now, what I've seen happen, and you just mentioned it, you have an owner that has a goal. Oh my God, I would love to get to 5 million impacted listeners. Yes. And you work hard and your team's working and you get there. Mm -hmm. And then you're at the top of the mountain and then you go, now what? Yes. That's when we reset. Mm -hmm. And we have to question and go deep about, Stacy. why would you want to go from 5 million impacted people to 10 mm -hmm. or to 50 million impacted people? Right. And that's your call. I have some people that would get their BHAG and then say, I'd like to exit. Mm -hmm. I have other people that said, that was so much fun. Yeah. I'm making such a difference profitably. How do I even make it? better and bigger. Right. But every time I've hit a major goal, when I'm not conscious of the ability to just take a little time to enjoy it. Yeah. And then discover the reset. Mm -hmm. I will stay flat longer 
until I understand what I'm going to reset to next. Right. And when you decide, I don't want to reset anymore, then I think that's probably time you need to consider either bringing in another head of your company and you just be an equity owner and let them run it because they want to reset yes. or sell it. Mm -hmm. But most of the people that I work with are legacy minded. Yeah. They just have this passion to just keep doing more of it Yeah, because it's, it's a great company to run. Right. Oh, I love it. I love it. Thank now, you. If we had to take today's conversation, you wanted to emphasize on a couple of important factors that you think would re really help the listeners today. What are some of the things that you would like to emphasize on? Um, keeping it simple. I believe you deserve the business of your dream. Mm -hmm. The dream is a vision with a plan. The plan is the one page strategic plan that we use in our growth operating system playbook. Right. So if you have this dream and you have drama and you're not living that dream in reality, mm -hmm. you're deserving of it, but you just need the roadmap to get it. Right. Don't give up on it. Don't think it's not attainable. It is because I've seen it over and over. We have 102 thousand companies in the world implementing this mm -hmm. and i've used it myself three different times three different companies and industries and it works yeah so don't give up just lean in and for those of you that want to discover what is my current business scaling up readiness are we ready to go on my website we have a quick assessment that you can take and it will tell you your readiness score. And then you can determine, am, do I want to do the next step to get there? Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell us some of the services that you provide? Yeah, it's uh, very simple. I provide executive coaching with business owners and their team implementing the Scaling Up Performance Platform in their company. As a result of that, I provide education on scaling up, ex executive coaching on implementing scaling up, and then I do facilitated quarterly and annual planning to help you update your strategic plan that you're going to implement with your team. Oh, I love it. I love it. Now, where can people find you? Yep. You can go to Aspire Growth advisors with an s.com see me right there and on the home page you'll see the link to discover your business readiness score and happy to have a coaching conversation after for those that want to talk about what that score means for them oh i love it i love it this has been amazing. I think today was a great conversation. I think you hit a lot of really great pointers. And, you know, we talked about scaling, but you also mentioned some of the aspects before scaling and what really, you know, is the foundation, you know, that you have to really prepare for before you get to that 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 point of of scaling which is very important because you know a lot of people just want to jump in and make profit but you really have to think it through and have a constructive plan and then yeah. you know slowly work yourself up and elevate to the next levels but today has been amazing i thank you so much for coming on this show you really pointed out a lot of great tools and strategies and ideas you know to help people really hit their their level of of growth and and be able to really take their purpose and, and make it a reality and really, you know, keep growing. And, and I love the part where you talk about reset, you know, because some people don't know how to reset, you know, they, right. they just keep going and going and going, they end up burnt out and they end up not being able to really function on full capacity. So it really is before you make that, you know, that jump to the, to the, to part two, you really have to take a break. And you actually you completed part one and you then, you know, and then you can think it out and maybe create a, a next constructive plan or idea or strategy to where you want to be, you know, but I, and I also love the fact that you talked about really thinking about the why, 
you know, and, you know, a lot of people just, just want to think big, but they don't think about why, why do you want that? You know, and if yes. you don't have the why, then maybe it's not the right decision, you know, like yeah. you mentioned. And I don't um, think many people think about that. Yes. No, I think Stacy, what's really helpful is that I think somewhere inside all of us, there is a why. Mm -hmm. But some people don't know the right questions to ask themselves to uncover it. Mm -hmm. And that's the beautiful journey that you have with an owner and their leadership team. Because once you're emotionally connected to it, it's so energizing, yeah. you'll do anything to work towards it. Right. And so you deserve to know your why, and you deserve to have somebody help you with the right questions. It makes the difference between living your life through vocation or just a job or a career. And we all know which one's more meaningful. Right. And we all deserve that. So thank you. Your, uh, I hope I've helped your audience. I've enjoyed you tremendously. I appreciate it. And let me know if you need anything else. Oh, thank you so much for coming on the show. And I, I appreciate you and everything you know that you've shared today. It's been a wonderful pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. You too.